Hey everyone, been a while since we connected, right? What with this lockdown putting pay to all our travel plans and you know, obviously we've been homebound all this while. So coming up with good content also has been a challenge. So we did dig up into our archives and came up with the story of a beautiful bird. Without any further delay, let's meet up with the star for this particular video. Till death do us part. This is not a phrase usually associated with birds and animals. You will however be surprised that there are quite a few species that are born for life. Although it's becoming increasingly rare among humans, which once upon a time was considered to be a virtue and a benchmark in terms of living standards. Personal views aside, here we bring to you the story of a bird that exemplifies love, trust, care, responsibility and commitment. The Great Hornbill, also known as the Concave Cast Hornbill, the Great Indian Hornbill or the Great Pied Hornbill, is one of the larger members of the Hornbill family. A long-lived bird, Bucerus bicornis as it's known in Latin, has a lifespan of over 40 years and has in our past become a symbol of importance in our culture and rituals. Tribesmen in part of northeastern India use these feathers for headdresses and hundred skulls are often worn as decorations. Conservation programs have in the recent past attempted to provide tribes with feathers from capital birds and ceramic casks to substitute for the natural ones. Great hornbills are found in the forests of India, Bhutan, Nepal, mainland Southeast Asia, Indonesian island of Sumatra and the northeast region of India. The distribution of species is fragmented over its range in the Indian subcontinent and in Southeast Asia. In the subcontinent, they are found in a few forest areas in the Western Ghats and the forests along Himalayas. Thanks to us humans, deforestation has reduced their range in many parts of India. The Great Hornbill is a large bird, about 37 to 51 inches long and about 60 inches wingspan, with an average weight of between 2 and 4 kilos. The males usually weigh around 3 kilos, whereas the females about 2.5. Females are smaller than males and have a bluish white eye while the males have red eyes. They also have prominent eyelashes. The most prominent feature of the hornbill is the bright yellow and black cask on the top of its massive bill. The cask appears U-shaped when viewed from the front and the top is concave with two ridges along the sides that form points in the front. Whence the Latin species epithet Biconus which essentially means two horned. The back of the cask is reddish in females while the underside of the front and the back of the cask is black in males. The cask is hollow and serves no known purpose although it's believed to be the result of sexual selection. Male hornbills have been known to indulge in aerial cask butting with the birds striking each other in mid-flight. What a magnificent sight it would have been just to see them do this. The male spreads the preen gland secretion which is yellow onto the primary feathers and the bill to give them a bright yellow color. The commissure of the beak is black and has a serrated edge which becomes worn with age. The wing beats are heavy and the sound produced by the birds in flight can be heard from quite a distance. The sound has often been likened to the sound of a steam engine starting up. Listen in and let us know what you think down in the comment section. Hornbills are distinctive in their food habits. They are essentially one of the biggest frugivores, meaning fruit-eating birds of the Asian rainforest, with about 40 to 70 percent of their diet comprising large ficus fruits, figs, droops and berries, usually red or black in color. They are also picky eaters as they prefer juicy and sweet fruits of sizes larger than 10 mm in diameter. 
The availability of these fruit trees thus defines their behavior, physiology and abundance in a given habitat. They also feed on small insects, lizards, frogs and snakes during their breeding season. Owing to their diet, hornbills have a great ecological significance as they play a very important role in dispersal of seeds and subsequently regeneration of forests. Hornbills are considered an umbrella or a keystone species as they are mainly found in undisturbed natural forests. As they swallow the fruits, the seeds are not ingested along with the flesh but are regurgitated back while the tiny fruit seeds are passed out with their droppings. They travel great distances in search of fruits leading to dispersal of seeds over a wide area playing a critical role in maintaining the structure of an ecological community. They are thus known as the farmers of the forests and their presence signifying a healthy ecosystem. Houndbells are monogamous but are slow breeders. They prefer mature forests for nesting. Large, tall and old trees, particularly emergence that rise above the canopy seem to be the preferred trees for nesting. During breeding season, which is usually from January to April, great hornbills become very vocal. They make loud duets beginning with a loud cock given about once a second by the male to which the female joins in. The pair then calls in unison, turning into a rapid mixture of roars and barks. The female hornbill builds a nest in the hollow of a large tree trunk, sealing the opening with plaster made up mainly of feces and a little bit of saliva. She remains imprisoned there, relying on the male to bring her food until the chicks are about half developed. The clutch comprises one or two eggs, which she incubates for about 38 to 40 days. And during this period, the female undergoes a complete molt. She loses her entire flight feathers. And imagine, uh, without the ability of being able to fly, she's completely dependent on the male for her food and life. The young chicks have no feathers and appear very plump. The mother is fed by her mate who is in the seal of the nest and the female voids feces through the nestlet as do the chicks from the age of two weeks. Once the female emerges from the nest, the chicks seal it again. Like I said earlier, the trust plays such a critical part of this phase of hornbill's life. The females and the chicks are completely dependent on the male for food. Imagine how it would be in a typical human scenario. Hornbills face different threats across the country depending on the culture, governance and the densities of human population. Hunting and logging are probably the most relevant threats in Northeast India where law enforcement of spoor and strong cultural practices are attached to hornbills. For example, the great hornbill and rufous-necked hornbills are hunted for their spectacular feathers, casks, and beaks to adorn the headdresses and their meat is believed to have medicinal value. Another important threat to the hornbill is loss of habitat and fragmentation which is accelerating in the northeast regions. With traditional shifting cultivation practices being replaced by permanent cash crop plantations, particularly in community owned lands leading to permanent loss of habitat and little scope for vegetation recovery. Illegal occupation of land due to improper settlement of land rights or poor enforcement by the forest department along the hornbill habitat or across the hornbill habitat is another major reason. As frugivores, hornbills need a large forest with ficus trees. However, logging of these trees as well as tree species that provide nesting have resulted in a significant reduction of their population. As humans, the best thing we can do for these hornbills 
It's just to leave them alone. However, this is easier said than done. One key factor contributing to the conservation effort wherever initiated has been the involvement of the local community. As humans, the best thing we can do for the hornbills is to just leave them and their environment alone. However, it is easier said than done. One key factor contributing to the conservation effort success wherever it has been initiated has been the involvement of the local community. Awareness and training sessions to help educate the locals about the value of these magnificent birds to their lives, both from a commercial perspective in terms of being able to draw wildlife tourists and the reputation of these birds as the farmers of forests enriching the environment, which is critical for these people to survive has made a significant difference. We are hearing plenty of stories where local people, especially the youth, keep close vigil against poaching by helping the forest department in preventing illegal felling of nesting trees and preventing other youth from their community from joining poaching ranks. They also strengthen the forest habitat by engaging in wildfire prevention and planting trees. They also ensure that human interference is restricted during the nesting season which normally begins in December January as a result we are seeing an upward trend in the numbers of these birds especially in South India in the Atharapalli Vaichal Nelliampati forest shoot these birds all you want with your camera and carry back a lifetime of memories let them live their lives and help us live our lives in a healthier and happier environment remember Hornbills have no predators other than human beings. So it's up to us whether this magnificent bird continues to be a part of this world or just becomes a museum display. Thank you for listening and we hope to be back with a new content very soon. Till then, stay home, stay safe, stay happy. Thank you.